Hey everybody, this is Dark Guardsman, and we're back with another video here. So I feel like I've been making too many of these update videos, but we're getting there. We're getting to the point where this mod's actually getting places. But what I want to do is show off really quickly a feature that's being added. Now this might have some mixed feelings because there's a bit too many of these in mods. Almost every mod has one, but Atomic Science has a wrench now. Now, I, this is why I mean mixed feelings is that I like Volt's Engine has a wrench. Thermal Expansion has a wrench, IC2 has a wrench, like every other mod has a wrench at the tech mod. This one's a little bit different and I'll kind of explain why and it's good like to think of the mechanism configurator when thinking about what I'm explaining with this wrench. So this wrench is called an adjuster. Um, just picked a name out of the hat pretty much at the, when I picked this. This is uh, designed to pretty much adjust the side of the machine. This is actually not really meant to rotate things. It's not really meant to do anything a normal wrench is, is supposed to do, even though I will put that functionality in there just because it will act as a kind of maybe an Omni wrench at some point in time. I don't expect this to take over the responsibilities of other mods of wrenches because uh, the fact is I don't plan to actually put a whole bunch of effort into wrenches. So you get the Crescent wrench here, for example. The Crescent wrench, which is from Thermal Expansion, is still going to be your primary wrench for interacting with Thermal Expansion. I don't plan to take that away at any given point but we may see some overlap with functionality just to make life a little bit easier uh, for everything now what makes this wrench actually unique is that it serves multiple purposes it comes with a rotation mode an item mode a fluid mode and a redstone mode although the only modes that you will probably ever be using is the fluid mode in it just because that's about the only one that another wrench from another mod is not going to overlap and take care of uh, now how to get to these modes really simple you hold shift down hold control down and middle mouse button just forward and backwards this will actually cycle it through the modes and if you notice when it's cycling through the modes the texture actually will change to match what it's doing and of course you can see down at the bottom what you actually switched it to so we got the fluid uh right here which is meant to look like a kind of a vice grip wrench style of uh, thing uh then you've got the item adjuster which is really meant to look like uh, like a tuning fork style screwdriver you'll see these very often with uh, very special machinery or very special parts like for example if you're taking a valve out of a um, uh, air thing so you like your tires and stuff have a little small uh, one-way valve I would I wouldn't even say one-way valve just a valve in general that you press down and it allows air in so you see like little tuning fork wrenches for that and of course watches also use them for the old style screw plate one I don't know if that's even used anymore uh, of course you got the rotation one this is kind of meant to look like a crowbar but I'm definitely gonna have to redo this one because it just does not look good whatsoever and we got the redstone one which the redstone one is meant to kind of look like a pulse signaler definitely need more texture work with these but so of course the main one you're gonna use is the fluid wrench now what also comes advantage of this one is that if you let off the control key and just hold down the shift key and do the middle mouse button back and forth you can of course change the color and cycle through the colors now right now there's a limited number of colors we got about five colors supported and it will actually go through and cycle the colors and each color will correspond to a different um slot in the gui now of course i don't have uh, actual colorized gui slots at the moment i just wanted to show the wrench off but there is actual logic and support it right now so if we go and we find a boiler here which i have one set aside this one's actually here because i need to re place it back in there how to destroy it for testing uh so if we go here and we cycle this to yellow we should be able to actually change this if the code actually wants to work let's really quickly debug this so you're going to see some live action debug just to fill the time out here uh, so item and the, the code's really simple to actually get the scroll mouse wheel going uh, it is really just a mouse event there's a mouse event provided by forge that you can interact with that mouse event was given by machine muse the person made machine muse power armor actually put this in here uh, it gives you the position of the mouse the delta position of the mouse the delta position of the mouse wheel the button that was pressed so left or right uh, the previous state of the mouse or actually the current state and how long ago that was or something like that I'm actually not sure if this is what that actually is but you can play around with that on your own if you actually do stuff now when the event actually does come in it does check if it's a wrench it does check if the player sneaking does check for the d will then it will send a packet to the server this actually does require the packet to be sent to the server because the server does not know what buttons you have ever pressed or what keyboards you have actually pressed unless i actually send packets that way uh, so we of course we send a mouse packet that does tell it okay we have the control key held down the mouse wheel has moved uh, and what the current item is you're holding it at the moment. And that actually does all that thing. This, of course, will then come into the uh, packet handling. Packet handling just encodes it, decodes it, then handles the server side, which then will grab it, make sure it's still a wrench because we want to make sure what we're doing. And then, of course, we handle the mouse wheel action, which will come over here and actually do the rest of the work for us. Control will toggle the mode. Um, 
and then toggle color. The additional thing I almost forgot to point out is this does actually have additional info, so if you hold the shift key down, it will tell you how to work, actually use it. It's designed for adjusting machines, hold control mouse will switch colors, mouse will switch modes. Uh, this is actually localized in a very unique-ish kind of way. So for those who do do work localizations, every single uh, bit of this is localized in a different way. So the item itself will change the name based on what you're doing. So it'll actually prefix with the color, the type, and the adjusting. For those who have really weird languages that are are based on the words next to each other, that's why I stuck that in there so you guys have full control over that. Uh, you also have full control over the mode display and the color display, so if you decide to change how that works, and of course you have full control over all that for the localization. But back to the code, of course, since we need to kind of fix this and make it work. So we can toggle the modes. On item use, should be working at the moment. Let's go ahead and stick this here, and we'll debug a click. I actually know exactly what's wrong with this. So there actually is um, two versions of this. There's one that's supposed to work with the machine and there's one that's not supposed to work with the machine. So I think it's uh, on item use first. Uh, this is called when the item is used before the block is activated. So this is actually the method we need to be using. Very simple oversight. There's two methods. Eh, you, you get the point. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put that in there. Launch the game back up. And that should be fixed and I should be able to show you kind of how it works. So it really is straightforward. It works exactly like the mechanism configurator, which is why I said think about that when you're thinking about how this works. Uh, it's not really designed off the configurator. I actually got done pretty much halfway through this and I realized, oh, I'm making a configurator. Uh, so might as well just say it's a configurator so people can connect the two thought processes in their head and not have to work as hard to understand one tool versus the other. Uh, the difference is, of course, this doesn't need to be powered. And on top of that, uh, we don't have a fancy GUI for displaying things. As well, there's no M key to hit for changing the mode and, and various other things about how that configurator actually did work. I wanted to make this as easy to use as possible. I do plan to actually put keyboard shortcuts in the future for those who do not have, actually have a middle mouse wheel. I know some people don't have that, especially when you're doing things like using trackpads on uh, uh, a laptop or Macintosh screens. I've actually haven't used a Macintosh computer in a long time. Uh, so I don't remember if those actually have some kind of function built into the mouse. I know, remember that they only had like one mouse click. I remember there was a ball thing in the middle of one of them. That's like, that tells you how long ago I've probably used one. Uh, but so this should be done and we should be able to right click this. Should be, in theory, be able to right-click this. We're getting, like, no interaction here. Let's put a put a break line here. Ow! We are getting some kind of interaction. Uh, this might be that one item that I remember that if you return true... Um, on the client side, it will not give you a server side. So the world is a client, play. Yeah, and you return tree, you don't actually get any of it. Let me hit false here. And then hit return true. Do that real quick and see if that works. In theory, this might actually work. Frustrating part about uh, interacting with machines. So that is a boiler. It actually is going into here. Uh, it's giving the mode and everything else. We may just have the wrong mode set. So if we go uh, on wrench, just processing machine, this should actually be the boiler is where this should actually go into. So if you keep doing this, it should debug into it. There we go. Uh, so it is looking for food, cool. It actually is working and I completely forgot to do this very important step. Player. Add check and put checks, new check and put text. So it may have been working the entire time, it just it, we weren't getting feedback. Um, uh, yellow tank set to output. Yeah, actually, we'll do it this way. So we'll go if this is true, then we want to set the output, and then if it's not, we want to say uh, set to ignore. Nor sucked. And that should work, and then we just have to duplicate this up to the top, and we just gotta say green tank, because we're not gonna call these tanks with names because they actually can store just about anything. 
uh, but we want to make sure that there is actually a reference point of some kind and there is feedback. For those who actually do make mods, this is an important like, notation that if you don't give feedback, somebody isn't going to know what's actually going on. And in my case, the feedback was very simple. And if I hit play against, I get my uh, screen back. Sometimes when you're debugging and you reload, you will actually lose your graphics for a second. So, you have a tank set to north side, set to the output side, and if we actually change this to green, we will say green tank is at the upper side. These actually are saved as well, so remember from previous videos, uh, you saw me use a stick and a slime ball. This is the same exact type of interaction, just now there's no stick and slime ball. We now have a wrench that does things. And what this is planned to be do, uh, do with this is that these t will all be colored. The slots themselves will also be colored. Uh, we will probably use different colors for the slots. Uh, the slots Actually, they'll probably use the same colors for a slot. So if this is a green tank, this will be a green slot, and they'll just overlap. So you'll have to switch to item mode, and it'll be green item is what it'll be. So if you flip using this to the item mode, you will then interact with that. And of course, there's no interaction, so the interaction will tell you if there's interaction uh, to tell you that there actually is something. So I'm going to leave you guys here, uh, and I'll be back with more updates and other content and other videos as we go along with this process.